Greetings in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We want to thank God for His presence in the midst of whatever is happening with our very eventful morning. But we know God is good and He's good all the time. I pray today that you would still be sensitive to what God is saying. The Word of God will not fail us. The Word of God will never, ever let us down. But here's some announcements. Anne Gounden, Nombello Latou, Lynette, Naidu, Shane Benvi, Chris Samaya. It's their birthdays. And I know in the midst of the gloominess, in the midst of everything happening, maybe send them a message if you know them. And I know that it'll give them tremendous joy. Uh, we also have condolences, Emily Free and family. Uh, we want to pray. We, we pray for you. We pray that God will comfort you on the passing of Frank. May his peace sojourn with you. It's our prayer meeting on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, we know we're planning to have an in-person service and we have a guest speaker, but we will just have to watch and go with the flow. I know the roads uh, in many areas have been affected, so we will have to make a decision as we get closer to let you know what is happening, even with our prayer meeting. It's a youth meeting on Friday at 7 p.m. The youth are having a great time. Send your young people. They will hear the word of the Lord. They will also have great fun um, in the presence of the Lord. Our new members meeting that was supposed to be just after church uh, has been cancelled to next week Sunday. So please take note of that. We want to go straight into God's word, God's powerful word. And I want to talk to you on the subject of crushed. When we are crushed, when we are going through things that we we just didn't anticipate. Nobody sets a date or predicts what's going to happen tomorrow. We, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen in the days ahead. We just have to trust God and know that he knows best that the times and the seasons are in the Father's hands. Let us pray. Father, bless your word. Let your word bring healing. Let your word bring comfort. Let your word, Father Lord, comfort the broken heart. You sent your word, Father, to heal our diseases. Father, especially for those that are displaced, especially for those that are troubled, for those that are wondering, those that have post-traumatic stress and just wondering, is it just going to be what happened before and how do we get over it? I, I'm just trying to pick up the pieces and, and now this happens. I pray, Father, that for those that feel so lonely and feel so broken, that feel so crushed, that you are able to pick up and lift up. You specialize in putting the broken pieces back together. We pray today, bless your word unto our hearts. Amen. We'll talk to you on what it is to be crushed. You know, it's not a good word when we think about it. I feel crushed. I'm going through the crushing of life and some difficult times. And What do you do when tragedy strikes again and again? What do you do when you just overcome heartache and pain and disaster? Only to face it again. You know, there's such a, a strong tendency to become despondent, to become discouraged by all these things that are happening to us. In fact, the human soul can become easily depleted and defeated. But we must remember that it takes crushed olives to produce the oil. That olive tree has to go through a process of intense crushing, squeezed, for the oil to come forth. We must remember that it takes crushed grapes to produce wine. It took a crushed woman in Luke chapter 7 and in other synoptic gospels. It talks about this unnamed woman who was labeled a sinner. And she comes with this spike now, this flask of fragrant oil that was worth a year's uh, wages. And think about it, something that was saved up, probably an investment and she takes it all, breaks it, crushes that bottle, plies it on the head of Jesus and it goes down to his body, anoints him for his burial. She doesn't know that's going to happen, anoints his feet and her tears go down to his feet and she takes her hair and she begins to just wipe it with her hair. She was a crushed woman, a broken woman. You need to understand in the same way as that spike nut oil had to be crushed. The hidden contents, what we really need of you, your deep calling that God has placed within you. We need that. God needs that to come forth. The external can somehow be a, a, blockage, a, a blockage or a, a covering or a barrier for those hidden contents to come forth. 
And sometimes that oil wants to come forth and that, that, that fragrance wants to come forth. But this exterior, the outer casing, and like the Bible says, even a grain of seed, it has to go down to the ground and die. And when it dies, it then gives birth and germinates and life comes forth. But the, uh, the outer casing has to die. And God has placed something within you that wants to affect nations. God has placed something within you that can touch the lives of thousands. But that crushing process must happen for the hidden contents to be relieved released it takes crushed grapes to produce wine you know people who are crushed like this woman who was labeled a sinner will do anything to get to jesus when you're crushed you have no pride when you're crushed you don't worry who's looking you know we find that it's only those that have been crushed by heartache by pain and even sometimes sin, it is those people that offer the best worship, the most authentic worship or true worship, as the word of God puts it. This lady was so desperate that she entered the room of a Pharisee in spite of the slander, in spite of the gossip. She didn't care about anything. She just wanted Jesus. And that's what the crushings of life can do for you. My text today is from 1 Samuel chapter 30. It's about David in a, in a very dark place. And I'm reading from verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the woman and those who were there from small to great. And they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives and sons and their daughters had been taken captive. And David and the people and all were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinom the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. But because of the soul of the people was grieved for every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Abimelech's son, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue the troops? Shall I overtake him? And he answered him, Pursue. For you shall surely overtake. You will overtake them. And without fail, recover all. This text is one that is very appropriate, I feel, in the context of what we are facing. In the context of what people are going through. David and his men, they, they've just been traveling and, 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 and trying to make agreements with the Philistines to... Uh, go and overtake the Israelites and to overtake Saul and and that doesn't work and they travel a long distance to come back home and they expecting to come back home after a long long travel to come back to a uh, celebration and to come back to noise and to come back to a, a grand welcome and people coming on the streets and their wives and children and friends and neighbors to welcome them but they come to the city of Ziglag and it is completely burned to the ground. It is nothing but a ghost town. And on top of that, the Amalekites had taken their wives and taken their children, taken everything, stolen all their property and, 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 and everything that they owned. They were left with nothing. The place was burnt down to smithereens. It says in verse 4, And David and all the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. You must understand that according to Baldwin, one of the commentators, he says that David and his men covered a 25-mile day. Now that is about 40 kilometers from Apec to Ziglag. And they were tired. They were exhausted. I mean, think about it for 40 kilometers. You would be really, really exhausted. 
You see, David didn't just weep because everything was lost. He also wept because he was the one who was also responsible for it. That is why he was greatly distressed. He should have not left those women defenseless, those children defenseless. He should have not done some of the things that he did. And because of this, historians say that he was in a low state, in a backslidden state. That David is like the prodigal son who now sits in the pig pen. He was distressed. And verse 6, it gets even worse. That the people even spoke about stoning him. Because the soul of the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in his God. The thing that brought David comfort is to strengthen himself in the Lord his God. You can understand these men have lost everything. They probably think that their wives and children were all killed. Their property was all gone. And David, of course, was notable. You read in, 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 in the prior chapters in Samuel that when David dealt with the Amalekites, he killed everyone. He left nothing to them. He took the, 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 all the spoils of war and he even killed everyone that was there. So in their minds, they were thinking that their wives and children were all dead. But it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. You see, when you are crushed by what life throws at you, find your strength in God. That word uh, strength uh, in the Hebrew comes from the word hazak. And it means to be strong, to strengthen, to be courageous, to overpower. It is used to ex express great strength. And sometimes when the crushings of life come and you, you feel as if you don't have the stamina and the strength to go on, find your strength in God. It was the strength of God working in this broken vessel called David. This man who was struggling, his leadership now was under threat. He lost everything. They were going to kill him. He's already thinking that his family is gone. But now he finds his strength in God. God supernaturally gives him the power to overpower his fears and his worries and his anxieties. He now has the strength and the determination to win back what the enemy had stolen. This is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You see, when you are crushed by the storms of life, go first to God before you do anything else. You see, David at that point could have went to the people. He could have explained to them, can we have a meeting? Can we just discuss this? And I want to explain my situation before you stone me and try to comfort the people and comfort his men who were grieving, who were mourning, who were tired, who were weary, who were fatigued. I mean, nothing. You can't think of a worse scenario. But the first thing he did was he went to God. He called Abiathar the priest to get the ephod to inquire of God. He goes to God. Spurgeon, the great preacher, the prince of preachers said it this way. God was beginning to cure his servant by a bitter dose of distress. And the evidence of the cure was that he did not encourage himself by his new friends or by the hope of others coming. But he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He didn't encourage himself by his appointment, by the people who knew him, by all his comforts, by his status. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He found strength in the Lord. Psalm 62 verse 1 says, I stand silent to listen for the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for the Lord to rescue me. For God alone has become my savior. He alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me, for he is my champion defender. There is no risk of failure with God. So why would I let worry paralyze me, even when troubles multiply around me? Nothing's going to shake me. Nothing's going to shift me. Nothing is going to get me down. Nothing is going to destroy me. Why? Because I listen to the one that I love and the one that loves me. 
And I'm going to wait for him. I'm going to wait and listen as long as it takes. I'm going to wait for him because he is my God. He is the safe place. He is my refuge. And therefore, I know because he is my champion defender. I know I, I cannot fail. I will never allow worry to get the best of me. I will never allow it to paralyze me. I will never allow troubles to get the best of me. See, when you're crushed by the storms of life, seek prayerfully, sorry, prayerfully seek God's will in the matter. I want to say that again. When you are crushed by the storms of life, prayerfully seek God's will in the matter. 1 Samuel 30 verse 7, David said to Abitha the priest, Abimelech's son, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. This was powerful. He sought the, he sought the will of God. He sought the purposes of God. He prayerfully wanted to know what is God's will in the matter. God, what do you want me to do? Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered, you go, go, David, go pursue. You will overtake them. You will recover everything. Jesus even prayed, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. You know, we may not see it now, but God is in control of everything. And everything that happens to us, he knows about it. He's in control. We must seek his will. We must ask him, God, what is, what is your, your, your mind in this situation? You see, as you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, you will be able to discern the perfect will of God. One of the questions I, I remember I used to get asked so much when I was a youth pastor. Pastor, what is God's will for my life? And this text tells us how to discern God's will. It says, don't be conformed to the world in Romans 12 verse 2. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, you'll be able to discern the will of God. You'll be able to know what God is saying when you start to strip yourself of those things that are of the world. When you refuse to be squeezed into the mold of the world. And you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you transform your mind? It is by meditating on the word of God. And when you do that, the Bible says something's going to happen. You will be able to prove what is good. You'll be able to discern this is the will of God. This is not the will of God. Sometimes people come and ask me, Pastor, what's God's will? I say, listen, that's the mistake that you make. And we somehow give people... Uh, the opportunity to just find a scapegoat to say, no, you tell me some prophet, some priest, some famous figure. You tell me what's God's will. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you have to do something. Turn away from the things of this world. Renew your mind. Be transformed by the word of God. And as you do that, as you pray and as you allow to marinate and meditate in the word of God, God will give you the capacity to discern I sense this is God's will. I tell people this. You pray about the matter and I'll pray about the matter. Sometimes they'll ask for some spiritual input. And sometimes I may not be comfortable with the decision they're going to take. But I don't make the decision for them. I tell them I'll pray with you. And I'll fast with you. But let's see what the Lord says in a few days. And oftentimes they will come to me and say, you know what, Pastor? After praying about it, I just don't feel the decision is right. And that's what we should do. Seek God's will in the matter. John 9 verse 31 says, And we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. David here went to hear God. Abiathar the priest. And they took the Urim and the Thummim that was on the breastplate even of Abiathar. And that was used to discern the will of God. You see, friends, God is interested in your recovery. That text says that they must pursue, they must recover. There's some things we can glean from that text. 
when he says that you surely will overtake them and without fail recover all. And that makes me start to think about something that God really is interested in your recovery. God doesn't want you to stay crushed. There's a difference with being broken and being crushed. Sometimes you are broken. You feel sorry for some of the things that are happening or you feel a sense of humility that just when you think of the goodness of God, when you think of his greatness, when you think of his beauty, you sometimes can just feel overwhelmed and broken by how he would love us and, and a sense of brokenness. But being crushed, God will cause the crushings to come, but God doesn't want you to stay crushed. That is why the Apostle Paul said, I'm pressed, but not crushed. Struck down, but not destroyed. So he was pressed, but there was something within him that kept him strong. The crushings of life did not destroy him. God wants to heal you. God wants you to get better. God wants things in your life to get better. And God can rebuild your broken life. The next point is this. Weariness, if you are not careful, can cause you to lose your focus. In 1 Samuel 30 verse 10, it says, But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Besaw. Notice this. These 200 men were so tired, they were so overwhelmed by grief and fatigue that they did not have the strength to go and fight for their wives and fight for their children. Why didn't they have the strength? Why didn't they have the, 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 the internal fortitude to fight for their families? The difference was David was this. David sought the Lord. These men did not get their strength from the Lord. These men did not get their encouragement from the Lord. And that is why they were overwhelmed by fear. They were broken by the situation. David was distressed by the situation. But the moment he went to the Lord, God infused him with the resurrection power. God infused him with the ability to face anything. God gave him the strength to gain momentum and to pursue, overtake, and to recover. These men did not do that. They did not seek the Lord. No way does it say that they went and they sought the Lord or they found the encouragement in the Lord. They were fixed on their predicament instead of their provider. I was just interested to find what the, the word besaw. It says that they could not cross the brook besaw. And the word be so actually means cheerful. It actually means cheerful. And I thought it very interesting that these men were so wary that if they would only muster the strength to go and fight for their families and to stay in the fight, they would have crossed the brook of be so, the brook of cheerfulness. In other words, joy was just on the other side when these men and later on you find when David and his men were able to destroy the Amalekites and it says only 400 of the young men fled on the camels but everyone else was destroyed and killed and and they took all the spoils they already had the victory they had passed the brook of Besaw, the brook of cheerfulness while these men were mourning and crying these men already their joy had come back. Their families had come back. Their wives had come back. Their children had come back. Their friends had come back. All the property that was stolen that came back. And they even had more. They even had all the wealth of the Amalekites with them as well. So much of spoils of war that they would actually give it to so many others. And, and the other uh, uh, leaders in, in, in Judea, he had to end up giving them so much of, of the spoils of war. So God gave them so much more than they lost. And that's what restoration is. You get back so much more than you lost. And he, in these moments when people are, are, are crushed by what's happening and people are struggling with post-traumatic post stress and, and, and just engaged in, 
and, and, and what's happening now, thinking about the past and allowing our minds to stay stuck in, in, in the events of the past, wondering how are we ever going to survive this. I want to tell you, find your strength in God. You have to pass the brook of Besor, the brook of cheerfulness. Find your strength in God that you can stand up and that you'll be able to fight another day. There is always hope with God. With God, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Some people I know use that saying there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I've changed it. With God, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Because our focus is on God. Uh, in fact, in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10, it says, That is why for Christ's sake, the Apostle Paul says, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. <laughs> this man says, I delight in it. I find great joy in, in hardships, in difficulties. Because I find that that moment that I'm, I'm, I'm feeling weak and I feel that I'm, I don't have the strength to go on. It is then that I'm replenished with God's power. I'm not depending on my own strength. Now God's power takes over. God's spirit takes over. God's anointing takes over. When I'm crushed by the things that come uh, from all sides and I'm hit by different things and different currents are coming, I find my strength in God. Because when I'm weak, His power takes over. When you are crushed by the storms of life, ask God to give you a strategy. Sometimes we are trying to formulate a strategy. How are we going to get out of this? How are we going to deal with this? David sought the Lord and God gave him a strategy. How? In 1 Samuel 30 verse 11, as they crossed the brook called Besor, in verse 11 it says they had found uh, an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he ate. And they let him drink water. Now who was this Egyptian? He was the servant of one of the Amalekites. But I don't think it was just any Amalekite because he knew all the strategies. He knew exactly which lands that they conquered. He knew exactly which territories that they conquered. If you continue to read even in um, you know, verse 12 uh, uh, and verse 13, uh, when David asked him, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he says, I'm a young man of Egypt, the servant of an Amalekite. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. So his master because he was sick, left him behind, thought he was going to die. And he tells him next in verse 14, we made an invasion of the southern area of the Keratites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb and we burnt Ziglag with fire. So this man had a lot of information and he even participated in the burning of Ziglag. He says, we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? So he answered, swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will take you down to this troop. Now, what is interesting about this is God supernaturally, this man who they thought was going to die, becomes one of the greatest agents and uh, gives David the strategy, takes him right to the enemy because David had to find where the Amalekites were. And this Egyptian now who was a slave, Gives David the strategy, tells him exactly. David could have got angry and killed him. But David listened to what this man said. And he's, the strategy now was clear. The picture was clear. The blueprint was in front of him of the way that he was going to attack the Amalekites and get back all that he had lost. You see, God will cause your enemies to bless you. I think of David and Goliath. You know, when people looked at Goliath as somebody who was going to kill them, David saw Goliath as the source of his promotion. <laughs> David saw Goliath as the source of his blessing. In other words, if I kill this man, that behind him, I know I'm going to get Saul's daughter. I'm going to get great status, great wealth. There's going to be songs even going to be sung about me. And David knew that Goliath was the key, that if he would kill Goliath, Blessings will follow him. So God will cause your enemies to bless you. I pray today, you know, as we, we, we even come to a close, that you will understand that God will help you. 
God will cause you to get back everything that you lost. In the crushings of life, realize it is to reveal the hidden contents. Right now, you may be feeling overwhelmed and worried by things happening on the outside. And we're looking at WhatsApp all the time. And, and I'm doing that as well. We're looking at Facebook all the time and to see the damages, to see which roads, to see the companies where we work, to see if it's still together to see if I can still drive home. And I was reading some of the messages where people were saying, I'm, and I need to get to the airport or I need to fetch someone from the airport. And people are, are sending messages. I need to drive down to Durban. Which roads do I take? And, 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 and you feel the pain. You feel um, what's going on. And I was on the roads yesterday and, and it was, was really rough. But we thank God that in all these things, we must find our strength in him. We must find our hope in him because it's the crushings of life that will release the contents, the ministry that you have, the greatness within you. Sometimes you can get angry why these crushings come. But every great servant of God, even in scripture, had to go through a process of crushing. David was anointed to be king. Did you think he immediately became king? No. Many, many years he had to run as a vagabond. He had to run as a fugitive. Do you think when, when Joseph had the great dream that immediately he became great? No, the crushings of life revealed the deep contents and the great things that God had placed within them. That within them, within Joseph was the capacity to help millions of people to save them from hunger. Within David was a king. The shepherd boy was a king. God had to just strip away the veneer and strip away the outward casing. The seed had to go down and die for it to grow. And I pray today you will find your strength in the Lord. Rest in him. Trust him. Know that he will not leave you. Know that he will not forsake you. Know that he will carry you when you can't carry on. I pray today God will bless you. God will help you. God will touch you. God would fill you with his peace. God would fill you with his purpose. God would fill you with his goodness. And for those of you that may have felt the harsh reality of this flood, you must know that God is the king over the flood. He is the one that said the words, peace be still, spoke strongly, boldly, and the one who ordered the winds, winds and ordered even the storms to cease. Everything that was coming against the disciples it just took one word from Jesus. Strengthen yourself today in the word of God. Father, we pray you will just touch your people. You will just heal your people. You will lift up your people, Father. And we know, Father, as your word says, from my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. What can man do to me? Bless your people now in Jesus' name. Please stay, stay safe and know today that you are in our prayers. You are in our thoughts. And contact us if you need prayer or any other help. Um, we want to know what's happening with you. And know today that God is our portion. God will never leave us nor forsake us. God bless you.